Hello, everybody. I'd like to start by saying thank you for being a fan or a foe of the Donnell Rawlings show. I know some people that watch this show, listen to the show, they listen and watch because they're fans of mine. And other people listen and watch because they're haters of mine. But in the event that you don't know what you want to do, be a hater or a lover, I need you to sus I need you to I need you to subscribe. We we like the people that love us and we support the people that hate us. We're trying to get these subs up. Make sure you subscribe to the Donnell Rawlings Show right now. You're watching and you're listening, but you're not subscribing. Do it right now, bitch. Haters, we welcome you. And now, time for the show. Hot, hot, hot. The Donnell Rawlings Show, live in your face. Fuck y'all, bitch ass nigga. You never take my place, chicka. So uh, this episode marks a very mon monumental, monumental, monumental time. Monumental. In this podcast represents a monumental time in my history as a podcaster. This is the 75th. First off, uh, let me explain the voice you heard in the background is a young lady that's been part of the Team Chappelle brand for so many years. She went from slinging t-shirts to becoming the production product coordinator, CEOF. What is it called? Executive production coordinator. Executive production coordinator for Dave Chappelle. And when we discussed this title earlier, she said, which means I'm Dave's bitch. <laughs> Not in that type of way, but a person that supports him and makes sure he's okay. Yes, team player. And um, the, the introduction is like when this is what I was before I was really interrupted. When I first started doing my podcast, or when I had the thought of doing a podcast, I wasn't excited about calling people to be guests on my show. I've talked about this on many platforms. I wasn't excited because I hate when the motherfuckers say, "Nah, I'm good." I hate the person that always says, yo, son, y'all know this. Yo, son, whatever you need, I got you. Say less. Done. No caps. Is that a cool phrase now? No caps? What does that mean? No, no lie. No lie. Right? No lie. No caps. They say all that. So when you finally get the nerve to ask this person to assist you, you get the voicemail. <laughs> You get voicemail. They get, you go straight to voicemail. And I'm an old head, so I actually leave voicemail messages. You actually leave messages? I leave messages. I leave voicemail messages. I do. I, I'm like this, just in case. Because sometimes you get things lost in translation. You know what I mean? You can't really feel, I thought you said you had me, nigga, in a text. Yeah. You know, but did you say yeah to the N-word? Okay, moving on. <laughs> I, you know. You know, you can't say, I thought you had me, nigga, on a text. You can't, um, you, you, people have to hear that. But now they do it. Now they got the, the new shit, voice text messaging, right? Yeah, because nobody listens to the voicemail you're leaving. Man, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard, man. People just don't, people just want to control their part of the conversation. I think so, because when you send me a message that you text it, and you're like, hey, just wanted to say, uh, I got your message. Well, you can't just call me. Why you can't just call me? Or why you can't just do the regular text? Like, it's like the FaceTime level of texting. I hate that. So anybody, like, I bet if this one of them motherfuckers right now, I'll lose my shit. What's the podcast download numbers per week? 
That's from my manager. I don't know. We bought it at 30000 So I'm going to get myself back on track. So uh, when I first started doing or thoughts of doing a podcast, didn't want to call anybody. I was like, I want to make this podcast interesting. I want people to be excited to hear from and see me. And I just didn't want to call anybody. So um, I was just doing a show in Philadelphia. Shout out to all the people that came to support me to Phil uh, Philadelphia Helium. It was a dope weekend. All sold out. Um, shout out for the people that supported that. So I had to do another podcast. I said, let me go to What The Fuck Studios, do a podcast. And I had a couple of guests on the list. And all of them fucking didn't show up. How many of us have them friends before they didn't show up? So I said, Daniel, are you going to go back to your original idea of doing a podcast completely by yourself? And I said, yes. But one thing about talking to people by yourself, sometimes you get loopy and you have nobody to bounce off, nobody to fact check any of the lies that you're saying, none of that. So I want to thank uh, Heather for sitting in to do that for me at the last minute. And I want to thank you for being such a, such a, dope part of the Chappelle Show brand. Everybody loves you. Oh, thank you. And what they like the most is the <laughs> <laughs> just there it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you gotta you go, there it is, double up. The <laughs> and the funny thing about and our whole group from security, everybody, you get used to hearing it <laughs> and then when you don't get a <laughs> you like, where's the fucking <laughs> so that's what she gonna, we gonna just interject <laughs> Wherever, in the meantime. And you can't do it on demand, like like this. Do it. Can't do that, right? I mean, I could, but it's not authentic. It's, it's not. Okay. What is it? Not authentic? <laughs> no, no. There it is. <laughs> go to the real one. <laughs> there go to re Yo, there go the real one. So like, I'm telling you, as a stand-up comic, you should travel with a snorter. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the illegal snorter, the, 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 not the illegal. The snorter is somebody that keeps you on track, somebody gets your timing, and they snort, on not on cue, but when you hit a funny note. All right. So part of uh, this episode is that I got to 75 episodes. I got the 75 episodes of this podcast. If I'm not mistaken, we've been out uh, in the podcast world for like two years. We, uh, When I first started, um, I started this podcast and I said, I don't want to get an elaborate studio, elaborate studio. I just want to do something that's simple, uh, that the audience would grow with me. And some of y'all people that's listening and watching now, you're, ass you're assholes. You're, you're real assholes. And this is going back to the friend and foe thing. Some of you motherfuckers are assholes. And when I say that, nothing is good enough. Yeah, Donnell, um, the show is funny, but I think you should bring the levels up in the headphones to like a 3.4. Everybody want to direct it and be the engineer. I like that, but I think the lighting in the background, man, fuck that. It's a content funny. Is it interesting? Do you like it? And that's why when I first started, I didn't want to do the Labyrinth Studio because I was like, I want people to grow with me. And I did that. And I want to shout this young lady out. She was supposed to be in the podcast. Things didn't work out the way I thought they was going to work out. But someone that's very much a part of the success and the demise of this podcast, Kate Quigley. Kate Quigley, I was talking about doing a podcast for like a couple years. And finally she said, Donnie, just do the podcast. Dude, she's blonde, so she always does her hair like this. She's like, dude, you can just do the podcast. We can do it at my place. So we did, our, did, our, did, it, ugh, we did it at her place. We did it in her living room. We had the cheesiest background. But the thing that I think is important with podcasts, we had a very engaging conversation. It was funny. It was bootleg as shit. We, every episode we grow. Every every episode we grew. And she started this podcast with me. And uh, I understand. This is what the streets are telling me. The streets are telling me that Donnell Rawlings is difficult to work with. <laughs> Facts. I didn't ask for a fact. You're supposed to be the fact checker. You can't just say facts. Like, like I need like to find a facts, a fact, but not say facts. 
There's swears on the streets, rumor on the streets is Donnell is hard to work with. And I want to know what is so hard about working with Donnell. You want me to start? You. So it's a list of shit? It's a list of shit. No, I mean, no, not a whole list. But it seems like you know one or two things that make me hard to work with. Impatient. Impatient? What you mean I'm impatient? You're impatient. You know what? I would. I'm you're, not going to. You're agree. getting better. I'm not going to agree with that. I will say this because I dated this young lady once and I said, I don't have any patience. She said, You don't have one patient. Like, I don't have one. No. But what am I impatient about? What am I impatient about? Anything and everything. Do you have an example of me being impatient? Um. <laughs> no examples. That means that's false. False allegations. If you have no example of you being impatient, maybe it's sometime, maybe I didn't want to walk somewhere before. Maybe. Yeah, you don't want to walk. You wouldn't even walk across the street. You made us get an Uber. I'm famous. It was across the street. I'm famous. Do you know what could happen going across the street? Huh? And when you say you're ready to go? I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. Exactly. Fuck so what's the wrong? tab. What? Fuck paying the tab? Yeah, like, you know, there's. we've talked about this. There's When you say you're ready to go, there's logistics. You have a group of people. If there is someone that is responsible to, to make sure I'm good when I'm irresponsible, <laughs> then that should be their job. Like, I think so. And I'm not trying to, like downgrade or I'm not trying to like diss anybody, whatever, but I know I'm not that responsible. So I position myself in life where I can afford to have, have responsible someone responsible people around you. Have responsible people around it to make me responsible. And no, I'm not walking across the street. <laughs> On Hollywood Boulevard, I don't think that's a good idea. Hollywood we Boulevard, fine. traffic's going. I didn't want to walk across the street. I wanted to get a car. Okay. I played myself. I didn't know how far boys and girls <laughs> didn't know how far we were supposed to walk. So I was adamant about I don't walk. Literally get in the fucking car and go two blocks. And I was like, God damn. It wasn't even two blocks. That's exaggerating. All right. Well, it was a half a block. It was across I, the street. It was across the street, but we had to hit the light. And I was like, oh, shit. Maybe I should have took this walk. All right. Back to 75th. Back to the thing that really, the thing that really, keeps me going about this podcast is that I know that there are people that listen. I know there's people that's interested in my life. I know there's people that's interested in the things that's going on in my friend's life. And I think a podcast is the perfect platform for it. But when I first started, I did not know what the fuck I was doing. Some people probably say right now, you still don't know what the fuck you're doing, nigga. But I've had moments. I've had moments on the podcast where like we've like laughed like crazy. I've had moments where I was lost to words. I had moments where I was lost to words, didn't know what to say, but was just in an emotional, in a, an emotional state. And I think that that's what makes a podcast good when people can see every side of you, not just the happy-go-lucky shit. And that's another thing I really appreciate about this podcast. I don't always have to be funny. When I first started, I was always, I gotta get a joke. I gotta get a joke now. You don't always have to be funny. All you have to do is be entertaining and be engaging and tell funny stories or share, fun, f to, to tell funny stories or share funny moments. So this episode is dedicated to sharing. Out of 75 episodes, I've kind of boiled down maybe five, six, seven uh, moments. They were really funny or something or a moment where I thought that I was getting ready make a turn in the podcast world and things were about to pop off. So, this is Donnell Rawlins show by himself with a petty ass executive <laughs> production coordinator snorter. Thank you for pulling up for me, Heather, because nobody else did. I really appreciate it. No and I noticed this is not, you, as you say, your thing. Nope. You know, it's not your thing at all, but that's a test of a true friend when you can call them and they show up. So enough of that mushy shit. This is one of, I consider one of the funniest moments on the Donnell Rollins show. They literally, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. And I don't want to be all judgy. No, it's true. But they lit, 
They lit your ass on fire. Yeah, because she said that you put shaving cream on it, then you light it on fire, and the shaving cream... Don't try this at home. I'm not saying to do it in case Don't you try burnt. this nowhere. <laughs> don't try this at the club. <laughs> but the shaving cream creates a layer of protection, and then you're supposed to be able to twerk out the flames if you do it right. Man, I don't know. I'd have been in some quick strip clubs, and that, um, that twerk win... You can feel it? No, you can smell it. No! Shut up, you cannot. Yo! What do you smell? You've never been to a joint in Atlanta, son? Yo, let me explain something. No. Yo, yo, I'm not going to say, I, yo, that twerk win? Yo, no, let me understand. Like, I mean, that twerk win. I never smelled it. No, you don't never, <laughs> yo, that twerk win is usually a combination of Febreze and, and that twerk win is Febreze. It's a musky Febreze. It smells like Febreze getting out of the car that had black ice. That's what twerk win smell like. And I don't give a fuck. Excuse me. I don't care how fine you are when, when that twerk went in. Black yo, you just turned to the ugliest bitch in that club. Is that I for real? Give, what? You really twerk win? smell it. This is real. You're not joking around. You're serious. So you trying to tell me. I never smelled it. Wait, 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 wait. You want me to understand. <laughs> so you've been to strip clubs before. Yeah. I'm assuming. Only a couple. You went to, and you've never had a twerk, a twerk went in. Uh, uh uh-uh. uh. They know when the twerk went. They know. They know. No. They know that twerk went hit. Cause they go back when they count their money. They be like, they 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 ain't shit out there. We need for breathing here. They like these broke ass it. niggas out here. Uh uh-uh, uh, bitch. Your twerk <laughs> win is that really? knots. Would you could what is for? How do you measure win? No, on a, it's is knots. It, it's knots. It's knots. When your when your twerk <laughs> win knots. is hitting like forty knots per hour. <laughs> Take the day off, bitch. Yo, how much money do you need? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to try to experience twerk win next time. No, I mean, you don't want to experience twerk win. I do now, win. just to have said I tried it. Nah, we should ask, we should, uh, <laughs> we should, we should ask George Perez. He works. Yeah. I don't know. We, I don't know if, I don't know if you want to try I want to smell twerk wind. I don't want to be a part of that no more. I just want to smell I've it. I've done that when I, it's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. I got to try it's it. It's like you smell it, you like this. How dare you? That'd be a good stripper name, Fabrizi. That'd a be stripper my name? stripper name. What would my stripper name be? I was a stripper once. You were not. Were you really a stripper? Why you feel sound so like... Because I can't picture it. Okay. I want to see it. Ah, the year of the comeback of the man and the dominance and the promise of really putting it down has to come back. I know sometimes people like this, well, I don't know if I can perform at a certain level. I don't know if I'm ready at a certain time. Let me explain something to you. This is where you can get help from Blue Chew. I personally think it's time for men to man up in the bedroom. And some of these men don't want to man up in the bedroom because they have a lack of confidence. All that's about to be dead. And this is how. Blue Chew is a very simple online process that can help you man up in the bed. You go to bluechew.com, talk to one of their licensed medical providers. They're going to answer a couple of questions. You're going to talk to them. And if everything works out, next thing you know, in the mail will be your package of confidence. Blue Chew uses the same active ingredients as Cialis and Viagra. Blue Chew is a simple process. Go to bluechew.com, talk to one of the licensed medical professionals. You get clearance, and it's simple. Go to bluechew.com, talk to one of the licensed medical providers, and in days, you will have your confidence package in the mail. And the best thing about it is totally private. Talk to their licensed medical providers. They're going to ask you some questions to make sure Bluetooth is right for you. And in days, ding dong, ding dong, the postman has your confidence. And I got a special deal for all my Donnell Rollins listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code ASHY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code ASHY to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the Donnell Rawlins Show. I, I honestly think some of the some of the most I honestly think some of the 
Funniest moments is shit, shit that you don't plan out of nowhere. When we get that belly ache and laugh, like black people laugh. And black people laugh so much different the way, I, even in my stand-up, I realize you go, you do a black show and a white show, uh, well, white show, I can say it, black show and a cracker show, right? Yeah. I like the fact that you didn't get offended by that. You get a black show and a white show. And it's hard to gauge sometimes how funny you think you're coming off in a white crowd because they laugh. They don't show it in their body language. They don't. White people, they, this is like, I mean, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> they even point. That's funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They point. That's funny. Or here's the white laugh too. When you so arrogant, you can't laugh at shit. When you look at a motherfucker and they say, "Hilarious." <laughs> they did. They yeah, and it's, there you go. That was a good moment. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you that right there. And then people try to get funky with it. Hilarious. And black people, I'm telling you, you have to have shoulder pads. When you laugh, when you laugh with black people, when black people laugh, you have to have shoulder pads because they slap it. Oh, and then words go from old oh, shit to old oh, sit. Oh, sit. Oh, you got to grab your stomach. Go ahead, stop. Oh, sit. Ah, stop playing. Ah, stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Oh, sit. That's a hard place to get to. Only certain comedians can make you have an old oh, sit moment. Yo, nigga, how you just gonna come in on the goddamn podcast like this? What level of disrespect do I have on my podcast? I ain't got no goddamn guests. Man, I don't got... Come here, man. Come here, man. Come here, man. Just come here for a second, man. Yeah, come all the way through, man. Just come through, man. And we got another mic? We got another mic? Your socks are All right, that's what I want to say. This ain't got nothing to do with me being desperate for a guest. <laughs> this ain't got oh shit this don't have nothing to do nothing to do with uh this uh no, hold on this don't have nothing to do with everybody stood me up this has everything to do with the level of disrespect that i've been shown at what the fuck studios now i understand what the acronym mean what the fuck <laughs> are we not shooting a podcast are we not are we not shooting the podcast? Yes, sir. There's no sign out there that says, podcast in progress, please do not open the door. No, sir. And you just think it's cool just to bust in on somebody's pocket? Not have nothing to do with me not having a guest. No, as a person who also podcasts. Man, first off, I don't I don't trust black people to point their finger like that first, man. <laughs> you act like I'm being used to like you like who you talking to? Why you do your hair like this? So go ahead. As a person, go ahead do that. As a person who podcasts in the studio frequently. Podcasts as a podcast personality? Exactly. I don't know shit about you. It's all good, brother. I'm I'm here to tell you that that happens to me all the time. And, and who is, are you? I am KR Jones of the Off the Strength Podcast. Why your voice changed when you promoted your podcast? Because it's a what? professional thing. Off, off the strength. Off the strength. Yes, sir. So what is off the strength? My, off my, the strength. my podcast is off the strength. Where? How many episodes you got? We are at 274. So, motherfucker, so what? <laughs> so what? Fuck, so what? I can do 274 too? Of course you can. How long you been doing it? Man, it's been three years. I got my shit is only, um, I only been doing my podcast for six months. You guys. Nice. Congrats. How many subscribers you got? Man, I don't count that shit. Yeah, niggas always don't want to hear them numbers. How many subscribers? I don't count How that many shit. We got, you know I mean? we got, right now, we got 67,000 subscribers. Okay. And six weeks ago, and we wasn't even off the strength. Mm. Six weeks ago, we was at 52,000, then we were 67,000. Okay. And guess what? Nobody ever wanted to be a guest on my show. See, that's disrespect right there. That's so, way worse than the door. No, okay, I'm curiosity, what, why did you open the door? I had to use the bathroom. See, it's my man Dave right there, and I knew right. he was gonna give me the key. And I had respect for the pot, that's why I came in quietly. Well, yo, first, stop with the hand shit, man. <laughs> that don't like what yo, you Yo, I like, talk with my hands, man, this is New okay. York shit, you so know what I mean? why did you come in, because he had the bathroom key? Yes, sir. And you need the bathroom key? Yes, sir. You didn't know it was gonna be a podcast going on, right? No, no, I, I mean, I could hear from the outside, obviously you can hear Now you're trying to say I'm a loud on. motherfucker. I mean, you. I know who you is, brother. You know what I'm saying? Who am I then? Tell me. Well, okay. 
because I don't know who you are. Exactly. And no disrespect. Till I want to know, who am I as a person that's on his 75th podcast blowing your shit out the water? <laughs> Straight Fucking up. out the water. I got to travel with a snorter, nigga. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> just because. <yeah. laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, because... This is what I have a hard time understanding. And Heather, you can contest to this. When we travel out, when we're on the road, we're on a date, whatever, I have a hard time understanding who I am. Mm. Right? I never connect with Donnell Rawlins. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or the hoopla or the fanfare of it. So you being the motherfucker that just bum rush uh, my podcast because yes, you had to get the key. Cause you had to take a shit. I had to take a piss, but who's counting? You know what I mean? Counting too. Get it? <laughs> Come on, nigga. Double snort. No. I'm for a person. Walk. Who am I? I want my listeners to know. Who am I? Where's your camera? From the outside looking Where's your in. camera, man? I'm directing this shit. Oh, no. Nah, nah, you don't got a camera? camera? Yo, how much the fucking money am I paying? <laughs> Yo, what? Yo. This, this was I'm playing. This is, this is off the strength. Is what it is. Nah, he disrespectful. The producer, man, I'm about to shit on Wheezy. Yeah, thank you for. Whoa. This is the elite right here. I know I'm fucking around. I know yeah. I can tell he nice because he don't talk a lot. Oh, not at all. Yeah, the motherfuckers, the producers, the engineers that talk too much. It's them and the people that point with their hands. Yeah, and shit the, like. the hand yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> the hand motherfuckers. You got a camera, right? Got it. And I'm taking a chance on this. Look directly into that camera right yes, there. Yes, sir. I got you. And tell my listeners that are fucking tuned in to this special episode that I'm showcasing some of my greatest moments. Tell those people who I am. This man Before right here. Start, okay. <laughs> okay. Before you start, can you uh, do something different with your hands? There you go. All right. Look at that camera and Got tell it. these people that probably don't know who the fuck is Donnell Rollins. Donnell Rollins. This man to my right is the legendary uh, comedic actor, if you will, an evolved man, Wait a I will minute, comedic say. actor? How you know I'm an actor? Nigga, I've seen you in, I've seen you in Chappelle's show. You, you've had roles in movies that I've seen. What like, roles? You don't remember shit I did, but go ahead, continue. I've seen you in these roles in evolved past just a on-camera presence to a podcaster, to a stand-up comedian, to... You know, uh, the the other shit you did with homie out in uh, out in the woods and shit. The, the white man, you know what I'm talking about. That was a, a real ass conversation y'all was having. Uh what's this? Why'd name? you have to bring that show up, bro? I am just out of all the shit that what I show? did. What show? You <laughs> Yo, you a sneaky motherfucker, man. Huh? Out of all the shit I did, he wanted Talk about, but that was a real conversation at some point. It was some bullshit that happened, but it was a real conversation. I respect that. Well, the story, the show he's talking about is Burt Kreischer's, um, the uh, the cabin. Yes, right. And I respect what you just said because I, you know, it's one of those things. Like this is, I'm a real motherfucker. Yeah. Like, Burt Kreischer. This is directed to fuck Burt Kreischer, fuck Tom Segura, fuck Andrew Santino, fuck um, fuck uh, who else? Theo Vaughn. Fuck, th I'm all of Everybody white involved shit. in that. Chris D'Elia. Fuck uh, two flagrants. What's that one called? Uh, flagrant two, some shit? No. Flagrant two, that Andrew show shit. Fuck all that. Because I call y'all, nobody pull up. You feel me? So I'm mad at everybody. Per Kreischer, and I'm going to tell you about friendship and what I did for him. Per Kreischer called me one day. This is what he sold to me. He said, Donnell, we're going to, um, we doing this show. It's going to be us men getting in touch with each other in nature. It's going to be a time for us to, uh, like, like just to talk and get to know each other. So now he, I was like, oh, man, Bert, you don't even got to, I mean, I respect you. If you call me, I'm going to be there, right? I'm going to pull was, up off the strength. Off the strength. You shouted your podcast out again? Of course. Smart. The Donnell Rollins show. You want to you you out shout out me? Off the Never. strength, the Donnell Rollins show. I'm, I'm telling you what it means. When people ask me what off the strength means, it's moments like this. Ain't nobody asked you shit about off the strength, man. I'm you telling you You said it story. earlier. I was listening to the story. He Whose side you are you on? <laughs> God damn, man. This motherfucker been here for a minute. It got eight snorts. I've been here for a whole 45 minutes once. No, fuck that. I don't trust nobody. Back to fuck whoever. All right. Burt Kreischer called me. Burt Kreischer says, do the show. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a time for us to get together. The person who's supposed to be on the show, Bill Burr was supposed to be on the show with me. 
And I, me and Bill Burr got a, a strong history. I'm like, oh, that'd be great. I show up to work. Bill Burr name ain't on no motherfucking trailer. Bobby Lee name is up there. You put Bobby Lee name on any trailer, it's just saying it's going to be a naked Asian come out of here. I go to the house. Burke That's Price. a given. You see his name on that. You yeah, know you know you're going to see his name, and at some point, he going to fucking get naked. So I go to the house where Burt Kreischer is. I walk in. This motherfucker butt-ass naked on a bare skin rug. I'm like this. I'm, I got to use all my homophobic terms. Pause. No homo. Fuck out of here. Y'all can do what y'all want. I ain't with that shit. Nigga, to each his own. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the new homophobic phrase. I mean, we, we've evolved. We've evolved. Even on a homophobic homophobic conversation, we evolved for like, fuck out of here. That shit is gay. Yeah. Now that we speak like, I mean, I ain't knocking with nobody do to each his own. You know, and, and that's the the evolution I was talking. That's about. the thing, but white boys, but white boys, they love to um, they love to do t push that envelope and shit. They love to push yeah, that. Yeah. When I was doing um guy code, I'm like, why the fuck they got call this shit guy code? They should call this shit gay code now. Everything they did was like, yeah, then you know you can grab his balls and his balls can. I'm like, now nah, get out of here. But you said something, a part of that show that I really appreciate that show. They did a lot of white boy frat boy antics. And shit like that. But it was that moment. And you're talking about when we were in the kitchen. Yes. And we were talking about fatherhood. And, and Bobby Lee was talking about his, his relationship he had with his dad. Yep. And I'm talking about relationship I the relationship I did or didn't have with my dad. Not in a negative way, just because of absence. Yeah. And that absence of, I don't feel... But he was in the streets, though, you said. There it is. He, he was I, real, you know? Oh, shit. And I'm from Baltimore originally. So, Body like... Boy. Yeah, so that DC Baltimore, it's fake beef, but like you know the real. And it you don't see you know what that funny thing about the DC Baltimore beef? It only exists in that area. It's localized. And it's for small minded people. Yes, sir. And when I say that, you think like it's like for the most part, everybody talk close to the same. You won't really hear that until you start going to different places. Yes. So I say it's small minded because there's so much other world, there's so much other country. It's so much other shit to do. You're like, are we really beefing with somebody that lives two blocks away? Are we that different from somebody that lives two blocks away? You're not. It's the same mentality. And until you move, this is why I encourage everybody to travel. Until you move on, take your brain, take your mind, your body somewhere else to see other things, you'll still have the small mentality of we beef with these motherfuckers. Mm. I didn't even know I was country until I moved to New York. Until you left and somebody said it and called they it They said it, right? Yeah. They was it, like, for me, there was like two and you and you. Oh, I, you tell, it'll work, I'm yeah. telling you, you'll work on your diction when you go somewhere away from your normal surroundings. I moved to New York and they, they kept on calling me, hey, what's up country, old country ass motherfucker? And I used to be like, why y'all say that? <laughs> and there's your answer. And them same folks will say that DC and Baltimore <laughs> ain't the South. But they'll say is but call you country. They were country, but anybody, or as they call it up here, up north, anything past uh, New Jersey, that's that's country. And then if you really look at it, it really is country. But you ask those same people in New York, I ain't country. Word the mother. You like what do y'all have your family union, family reunions in North Carolina, mm. in South Carolina? Fact. Every motherfucker I know, this Brooklyn Brownsville never ran, never will. They got aunties and grannies. That are down south. That's where they go. That's the first place that we travel to to call ourselves stretching out. Now, selfishly, I got one question for you. No, we can't. Could, you know, come on, go, man. Go it's off the strength, good man. Shit about me, so. Of course. All right, so this is the good shit that I'm talking Heather, about. Heather, are you doing other shit? No. This is this is the good shit I'm talking about. I said you were an evolved man, right? And I'm a dilf. No homo. <laughs> but my question to you is, what's it like being successful in the shadow of... Uh, someone who is considered an icon, right? Because I think about like a Pippin and a First Jordan. First off, man, right? I don't even want to hear this motherfucker dumbass question he just asked. That's me. a how's that dumbass? Why question? you put me in the shadow? I'm I'm saying because it, it's hard no, to why, why, eclipse why, why, I, a, a generational why, fucking talent. No, but why you had to say shadow though? Shadow because that's that's what most people try to cast those people. You get what I'm saying? So like, you say I'm in the shadow of Dave Chappelle? I'm not saying you're in the shadow of Dave Chappelle. I'm saying what is it like to be perceived oh, in so that? Oh, so you try to say I'm in the shadow of Dave Chappelle? 
I'm not saying you in the shadow, brother. I'm saying that's what you said. I'm speaking from somebody. Man, who, I ain't got time to talk about no goddamn Dave Chappelle. It's not about him. I it's about, talk about you. Seventy five fucking episodes. I'm talking I talk, about man, you. you the most fucking wrongest ass god. I don't even know how he got on this show. I don't want to talk about that. You hear what these fuck he said? How does it feel like being in the shadow? It's not of such an iconic, the goat, and then it's you. I said how being does it feel successful. Like in the shadow. That was the question. I said, what is that like? Because it's a difference when people try to compare Do I have an issue with my anger? Or You didn't let me finish my list earlier of... You had a list? You really had a list of the things why I'm impatient? <laughs> Get your list together. And in the shadow, here we go. Successful. I, okay. I want to take time. And this episode was supposed, about, was supposed to be about me. Funny clips, funny moments in my 75 episode Career, oh, so let's you, go to that. You ain't leave me nah, with you that. Fucked it up, you ain't man. leave me with you that. Up. Check this out. Support for the Donna Rollins Show is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package. Join over four million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you: twenty percent off and free. Worldwide shipping with the code ASHY at manscaped.com. And if my math serves me correctly, that's about 8 million balls. I know every man has dealt with this situation where you had that hot date and you wanted to get your personal grooming. You wanted to support your DILF life. And you tried to do it on your own. You tried to get your old school clippers and ah, something went horribly wrong. Guess what? We don't have to do that no more. Of course we want to take care of our hygiene. But now... There's something that'll help you not have those man accidents. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. You'll find a weed whacker, ear and nose trimmer. Want to get those ears right, and you want to get that nose right. I'm telling you, nothing worse than digging in your nose trying to get those nose hairs. And for those smelly balls, you got the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Ah, nothing like ball smelling nice. And you're asking yourself, Donnell, but how am I going to carry all these things? You get a travel bag to put all your nice goodies in. It's a travel bag to protect the sanity of your balls. Let me explain this trimmer. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the future of grooming and, dare I say, the greatest ball trimmer in the history of all ball trimmers. Their fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic Blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is, is waterproof and it also has a 400K LED spotlight if you need to be able to shave in a dark. And because these trimmers are waterproof, you can forget about the sloppy mess you leave in that sink. And Manscaped is also throwing in two free gifts with the Performance Package 4.0. If you want to use the same products that Ashy uses to go from Ashy to Classy, use my promo code Ashy at Manscaped.com. Promo code Ashy at Manscaped.com. 20% off and free delivery. Tell them Ashy sent you. I have. I will say, I don't get starstruck, but it was one time Michael Jordan. Who am I? Michael Jordan <laughs> dissed me at a club in Miami. <laughs> It was so what? fucked up. It was so fucked up. Michael Jordan, right? And I've told this story before. So I was um, dating it. I don't know. I had this one outfit that I thought, you know how you go through that trying to be intellectual and, and woke at the same time, mm -hmm. like bow tie and the glasses and shit. And I had made this outfit, had a shirt, tie, vest, whatever, glasses, these little class hat. I looked like like, like brother knowledge, <laughs> right? Like I would start all my sentences like, listen, um, right? And I'm, I got this outfit on, and then I'm in a club in Miami. And then I looked over to my right, and it's a group of people, a group of people. looked like like just a group of people coming. I was like, God damn, what the fuck? And I, by the time the group got to me, coming to me, it was Michael Jordan, right? Damn. It was Michael Jordan, right? Like, I'm looking at this nigga right in his eyes. He walking past, <laughs> right? And everybody was like, nigga, if so what? Jordan, nigga, he put his pants on the same way. Uh-uh. It was Michael Jordan, right? I mean, that's Michael Jordan. It was Michael Jordan. And I looked at him, and I don't never, like, talk about anything I've done or do any catchphrases to get attention or anything like that. But um, I, 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 <coughs> I looked at him. I said, I said, I said, I said, I, I, I said, 
I said, yo, I was on a Chappelle show, man. Right? I was like, I was on a Chappelle show, man. I'm rich, bitch! Like, because usually that get people like, oh, shit, you know, I'm rich, bitch, nigga, right? But I didn't realize that that's Michael Jordan. Can you imagine me in this corny-ass motherfucking uh, goddamn, uh, goddamn Fort Greene Brooklyn outfit look like Spike Lee would wear it, right? I'm sitting this motherfucker and I say, I'm rich, bitch, to Michael Jordan. <laughs> I said, I'm rich, bitch, to Michael Jordan. He looked at me like, man, if you, nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of my face, right? He gave me two seconds. He went past, right? I mean, yeah, I'm telling you, I wanted him to recognize me. I had the disguise on that. I saw that nigga coming up. I started ripping that shit off, nigga. I unbutt my tie. I was like, uh, 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 uh. I was like, uh, 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 um, uh, right? And I said what I said, and he looked at me. My sh look, nigga, my my shoulder blade. You know, if this part out. <laughs> Yo, that's the most non-masculine joint. That's probably how Charlemagne do his makeup in the morning. He have his shirt over right here, <laughs> right? And the girl I was with, she got mad, right? She said, damn, nigga. She said, damn, you almost trampled me over. Like, you almost got naked for that nigga. I was, she said, you took half your clothes off. I said... I said, bitch, you see how you see how hot it is in here? Fuckers you talking about? Ain't nobody tripping off no motherfucking Jordan. She was like, go over there, go ahead, finish around this dick. I said, ain't nobody tripping off a Jordan. She, yo, she turned her back, nigga. I was like, phew. I followed the posse. Right? He in VIP now. He over on the corner. I'm like, well, maybe he didn't hear what I said. <laughs> I'm rich, bitch. Like maybe it's too, maybe it's too many people around, you know? So I went up to him. This time, he's. I was like, um, I, it wasn't. The nigga ain't even looking at me no more. The nigga, you looking at me with his peripheral. He like, <laughs> it's a thirsty nigga down there, right? <laughs> he looking like, oh, oh, he got a big ass, yo, know, like, like, like oh, thirsty ass nigga. I told him, oh, right. <laughs> so he was with this white dude. I was like, I tried to get the white dude, right? I was like, um, excuse me. <laughs> You might not know, but uh, I was on a show, um, um, Chappelle show for years. It was kind of a popular show. Um, rich bitch. I was just wondering. Um, uh, I was just wondering if I could get a pitch, picture with Mike. You know, like it's an in between guy, right? <laughs> this nigga said you got to ask Mike that. I was like, okay, Wait. nigga, I'm about to go ask Mike. I ain't know it. I ain't know I ain't had to talk to you. <laughs> he said you got to go ask Mike that. I pulled up. I said Mike. Um, I said um. It'd be great. I know you get this all. I'm fanboy now. I'm, I'm like, I'm I'm basically like this. Fucking no way. No fucking way. It's Jordan. But I'm trying to be cool. I'm like, you know, I'm a fan, man. Um, you know, it'd be nice. He said I don't do pictures. Mm. Man, I was so sad. I, I, you know what I felt like? I felt like. Charlemagne not having an ass to grab. Oh. <laughs> That's what I felt like, just no ass to grab. And I did what any real motherfucker would do. I went in the corner and I got on Twitter and I started hating. <laughs> yo, I was like, I went, I, yo, yo, you should have saw me, son. I was over looking gangsta and shit, like I'm about to call some murderer niggas, right? I'm like this. I got my phone like this. I'm starting to hashtag. The hashtag was called hating on Jordan. <laughs> right? I was like this. I'm looking at them like this. I'm looking at them like up and down, like, yeah, man, I'm like, you that <laughs> shit. So what, nigga? Right? And this was the hashtag. You could look it up. Hating on Jordan. I said some shit like, man, I just saw Jordan in the fucking club with some <laughs> old ass fucking raggedy ass Jordan sword. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no joke. Yo, yo, I was like this. This nigga right here, man. Yo, I was like this. That's what you start hating. You be like this. I mean, he, I mean, come on, man. Whatever, man. I was like this. The next one was like, I said, yeah, yeah, he can play basketball, but nigga can't play no baseball. I was like, nigga, get a hit, hit something, nigga. So what? 63 points, hit something. And nobody responded to that shit, son. And that was the time that like I had no like how do you not you see Michael Jordan yeah it's like see you see Michael Jackson you know what I'm saying you like oh! I remember oh yeah another time I was starstruck it was at uh, it was in New York mm -hmm. I was at the Boston Comedy Club right Barry Katz very very big time producer manager he had some of the biggest names in comedy so this this was his club Boston Comedy Club it was a really small club and um Prince had a sister-in-law or somebody that was doing comedy. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And right, and everybody was like, yo, Prince in there watching the show. Nigga, I was like, phew. <laughs> Nigga, I was, phew. Think I went up there like, where, 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 where? I'm gonna tell y'all, this nigga Prince was, yo, seeing this nigga, and the thing about it was, like, I look back there, the nigga ain't have no lights or nothing back there, but you just felt like a light going off this nigga. I was like this, I looked, and I did not want to make eye contact because it could get fluid. <laughs> yo, Prince would make a nigga get a little fluid for a second, son. Right. But it was just so crazy. And like watching him, like Prince laughing, he wasn't like, ha ha! <laughs> you know, he was like, he was like this. <laughs> I think his eyebrows the only thing that laughed. He was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's Prince right there, yo. That I was starstruck then. I met Gail King, and when I met her, it was so funny because again at a show, Dave Chappelle. That's where I get to meet all my folks. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sh-. when you see Gail King, you respect her as Gail King, but when you see Gail King, you think you're about to be Oprah. You know what I'm saying? You're like this. If I'm waiting for her to come out. Yeah, no, not that, but you're like, if I make the right impression, I know and they could be having some wine or something and my name could pop up. Right? I'm just like this. I just want my name to pop up around over, right? That's it. And I swear, I know I, I smashed this show. I smashed this show. And we were at this little restaurant right beside it, getting little bites before we do a party. I smashed this motherfucking show. And Gail King sat beside me. She said, "What's up, Donnie?" I was like, "I was like, what's up, Oprah friend?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't say that, but and in no disrespect, I was like, "What's up, Oprah friend?" Because that's what a lot of people <laughs> say. You, know? you like, you know, it was just like she got her name now, but before, just like uh, uh, Eddie Murphy's brother, Charlie Murphy. <laughs> you got to be a platform for it. Get your own shit. I was like, "What's up, Oprah friend?" And we talking right, and then she was like, "Boy, you were funny. She's so sweet." She's like, boy, you were so funny. I didn't know. You were so funny. And I was like, thank you. I really appreciate that. Right? And then she was talking. She was going through her phone or whatever. And my phone was right there. And uh, she looked over at my phone. Right? I'm like, I was like, you don't be, you don't know what's up in my phone. She was like, what's in your phone? Right? I was like, oh, nothing. I got scared and shit. Right? <laughs> right? And she was like, you were funny. And then she said, uh. She said, are you on, are you on Instagram? She had a reading glass. She said, on your Instagram? <laughs> I was like, that's kind of a disrespectful question. How am I going to be in the business and not be on Instagram? And she said, boy, are you crazy? She said, what's your Instagram? <laughs> she was like this, right? She said, what's your Instagram? Right? <laughs> I said, down there Rollins. She said, and what a, I was like, just my name. <laughs> so she put my name. She said, it was so kind of fun. She said, oh, there you are right there. I know she looked at how many <laughs> followers I had did. I think I was 32,000 deep right there. Like, she was like, oh, there it is. And I had did this video, right? And I did this, I, I, you remember when I started my organization? Yeah. Um, save, uh-huh. save, whatever. The save organization where I was going out to try to save women, you know? And uh, the name of the organization that I called, it was called, it was savingbitch.com. <laughs> Right, and so Gail is on my page. I had just dropped a video for it. So you see me in a preacher outfit with Tim's on, right? <laughs> and up there, right? And like, and then she said, what is this right here, right? And I knew it was the same bitch organization, right? I said to her, I said, Gail, let me explain my platform. <laughs> I, this is a true story. I said, Gail, let me explain my platform. She said, what is this? This seemed like, I said, well, I started a foundation for some women that may need help. I said, Gail, because I believe that women at a certain time in their life, they have temptation and salvation. Depending on who comes in their life, it would di- dictate where it goes more to the temptation side of the salvation. Meaning somebody somebody that influences them, uh, inspires them, and motivates them, it could go either way. Pimp preacher, it could go either side, basically. She was like, oh, I like that. I was like, yeah. And she was like, I really like that. I was like, yeah. What it is is child is to empower women. This is what I'm telling. She was like, I like that, <laughs> right? And then she said, she said, <laughs> she said, what's the name of it? <laughs> she said, what's the name of it? I said, first off, um, Oprah's friend. Uh, first, I want to tell you that I use words to evoke a certain emotion. 
I, I'm trying to warn. I'm like, I use words that would be challenging to some people's ears, but they evoke emotion, and then you build dialogue off of that. She said, what's the name of boy? I said, it's called saveabitch.com, right? <laughs> and she said, oh, no. <laughs> She looked at me, I was like, oh, I ain't gonna meet Oprah, bitch. I ain't gonna never meet Oprah. <laughs> All right, so to answer your question, how does it feel to be a nobody in the shadow of greatness? I said successful, brother. Um, it feels good. And it also, the thing that feels good about it, because not my entire career, but like, I was a part of a show that was in television history. Right? You weren't a part. You were impacted. Everybody knows who Ashley Larry was. Like, those moments can't be taken away. That's some right. shit that Dave couldn't do, right? right? So that that's legendary in itself. So you weren't a part of. You, you stole every scene you were in. And that's what I'm saying. Like, to be successful in that, I feel, that I feel like? To answer your question... It feels good because I know that someone's presence and someone's greatness could overshadow the greatness that you think you have or you have. Mm -hmm. It's like people would be like, oh, man, this one for funny. He okay. But I think it's a testament of my work ethics, how hard I go, and, like, I don't get distracted by anything. I've heard people say if it wasn't for the Chappelle show, he wouldn't be anything. I've heard that dumb shit. And I tell them, going back to what you said, it was like, it was a team that made that show successful. I wasn't hired as a cast member of that show. I just happened to do funny stuff. And you and improv were, some of it too. 90%. That's what I'm saying. 90%. That's, that's a talent right there. Yeah. yeah. But I feel um, I can I can hold my own. I can hold my own with any comedic talent. That's not cocky. It's true. Now and you, not just, and I'm not talking about, and then when I when I say comedic talent, like I don't mean like uh, in comedy sketches and funny movies. And the way I gauge me personally, the thing I give a fuck about the most is my stand up. Who made the potato salad? Who made that potato salad? <laughs> See, I watched that God shit, damn, man. Man, I'm gonna apologize. Come on, for. Talking to you about going to take a shit, man. <laughs> I'm a true fan, honestly. I, I wouldn't even. I didn't even know that. And I'll see, man. I might need some. Um, I might need to see therapy. Do I need a therapist? Probably would help. Why would it help? It's always good to talk to somebody. I talk to you. I talk to Forty. I talk to Jose. I talk to Julius. I talk to enough people. Why I got to pay somebody to talk? Well, because you don't talk to us about everything. I talk to Forty about everything. Well, I talked to 40 about everything. You better start paying 40. No, I'm just saying. That's why, man, I know, man. Boy, man, if I go first between me and 40. <laughs> yo, I'm like, boy, I mean, that nigga going to miss me. But he going to be like, yo, let me tell y'all something. He going to tell the best. Yo, nigga going to tell, tell the story. Something. He need to be on well, this couch. Yo, 40 come up. But 40 be like, he'll, he'll be talking. He be like, he'll talk shit. And like, yo, son, let me get on that motherfucker spit my shit. Nigga, y'all gonna see what a real podcast. And then when I call him, he be like this. Uh, <laughs> we ready to go? Where do we do that, LA? And all of what? us just sat there and didn't talk? They talk all that. They always say, yo, I'm, let me get five minutes, son. It's different. <laughs> let when, me get five minutes when on When the stage. lights and cameras on you, it's a completely different atmosphere. It is a big difference. But that's why, as much as I love stand-up, which I do, I found, I'm starting to find my lane in the podcast world, I'm starting to understand that you don't have to be funny every second. Let the conversation come to you. And sometimes some of the funniest or the most intriguing moments come when you don't expect it. And again, this is the 75th episode of the Donna Rawlings Show. And what I'm doing is I'm sharing clips and I'm sharing moments that meant a lot to me. Check this out. Right, sometimes you have technical difficulties, but when you're an improv master like myself, you don't give a fuck. Worst thing to do is have a producer that says, are we ready? And then we're ready, this nigga isn't ready. That's why I got something special for his ass this episode. Fuck with me, you get blasted. <laughs> a lot of people say, Donna, what do you got? This is a assault weapon. 
and I assault. Fall back. <laughs> Don't shoot me. All right. This is another episode of the Donna Rollins Show, the world's greatest place to spend a pandemic summer, Yellow Springs, Ohio. I know you're asking yourself, Donnie, what is all that shit you got on right now? <laughs> I'll explain it. I'm a motherfucking river ninja. Okay? Why your nose so big on that? <laughs> it's like so spread. So I can <laughs> smell the bullshit that's coming out of your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Don't point at me, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> in the fucking face. All right, stop fucking shooting me, okay? Okay. Did you see this shit? It says do not shoot in face or fucking eyes. All right? I actually have salt in my mouth. <laughs> You're supposed to have salt in your mouth. I know that's not the first time you had salt in your mouth. Okay, so. That was actually funny. <laughs> All my shit is funny. Don't do that. <laughs> right. Everybody know this is the gear of a Rambo Ninja. I mean, also, this is the gear of a person that's selling merchandise. If you look over to my left, that's the hot River Ninja shirt. <laughs> and over there, that's the hot hoodie. And right here, these are masks that we're going to sell. We got a lot of Jews in the house tonight, so they're going to tell us what's going to be our <laughs> best price point and how we can make more money. Don't forget the Yellow Springs candle. That's, the Yellow that's Springs candle. But, okay, all right. You know what? I'm giving up a lot of information, right? Uh... A lot of free publicity. I fell in love with this. Come on. Hello? Hello? Administration. This message is intended to contact you regarding a legal enforcement action executed oh, under the social security number for suspicious and fraudulent activities committed Yo, the in the state of Texas. Texas. And we just suspended your social security number. Ignoring this will be an intentional second attempt. All right, this episode is all about podcasts. So you being a podcaster, yes, and this is a question I get from everybody on my line of work with stand-up comedy. If you had any advice for a person that was coming up that wants to do stand-up, uh, what would you give them? I've already, on so many platforms, explained the advice I would give them. But you being a podcaster yourself, what advice would you give somebody that's starting podcasts for the first time? I would say make sure you have a... Man, yo, man, this motherfucking building, man. What the fuck is wrong with this building, son? I know they're doing the construction, but anybody tell me about construction? That's nuts. When I called Weezy and I said I need the time, she was like, oh, man, it's in a quiet location. It's distractions. I said, but I have an issue with people walking in on my shows getting keys to go shit. And she said, don't worry about it. We have so many bathrooms. We'll leave the shit key on the outside. That would make sense. Right? That's right here. And now that I come in here and 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 I hear jackhammers. It's Mex clearly Mexicans. <sighs> That was racist, Heather. It was. It just a bit. Chinese people don't fuck with jackhammers. They were. We passed Chopsticks. the floor. Chopsticks. Oh. Is that racist? It's that. getting worse. Guess what? It doesn't matter because this is what a podcast is about. A podcast is about nobody telling you what you can do, what you can say, how you need to talk, how you need to walk. It's like, I'm going to say Feel what I want to say. Yeah. And you come and fuck with me. That's why when you subscribe, you subscribe to something that you want to enjoy. And you can't fire me. Can I? Can I? I can now, to answer you. your question. Yes. I would say focus. make sure you have a message, right? Because it's a lot of motherfuckers that get on a microphone and don't have a message. And just because you have a microphone doesn't mean you have a message. Right. So you can go back to any of my podcasts. I'm leaving you with some type of Man, information. Man, you go talking about your goddamn podcast again. How but much, that's, but how much it has to have. How else do you want, son? <laughs> Nigga. I'm just saying, man. I know you just saying. <laughs> how did this 75th anniversary? Yeah, for sure. Post Congrats to me about to that. me. And now the, all we keep talking about is on the strength. Off the strength. Off I the strength. Stand. Are you letting me come sit on this couch with you for 75, man? Not for nothing. That's a that's an accomplishment of consistency. All right, first off, I didn't book you. You didn't. <laughs> you could throw you, me out anytime. That's why I'm appreciative here. You no, know I man? didn't like you make it seem like, yo, man, 
I found, yeah, no, I just, you came in. I interrupted. You interrupted with the shit key. It's like they know you here, because it's, it's subtle, too. It's not like... This is supposed to be... Yo, man. That's craziness. Here's the fucked up thing about this. This is supposed to have been symbolic. This is supposed to have been monumental. This is supposed to be like, oh, my God. Balloons and champagne and shit. And what I thought was supposed to be a tribute to some of the podcasts and the moments, it turned into a whole fuck Donnell Rollins and a Donnell Rollins show episode. <laughs> is that fair to me? Now, moving from that and speaking to you again, I happen to be watching the HBO shit uh, about magic, and I happen to see you in there in a little cameo. You know what I'm saying? And, and the, the cool black dads at the cookout shit, man. How did, how did that role feel? Okay, I will say this. Your line of question is so disrespectful. <laughs> First off, let me just let me. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting you. You highlight me, but you shitting on me. How am I shitting on you? You said, Little am I am I the only person listening to this the little podcast? cameo? That's a bro. No, no, it nigga, was... Lul. I'm from Bmore. You know that's how I, I know Lul, and I know what it mean. <laughs> Fuck you, talk about. <laughs> I know what Lul mean from a motherfucker from the DMV. You said, yeah, I'm from Bmore. That's how we said. Yes, I know what that mean. Your Lul. I saw your Lul. I saw your Lul Lamborghini. Lamborghini. <laughs> I ain't got no fucking. I know, but I'm saying, no, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is how disrespectful you are. How the fuck did he get whoa, on whoa. my show? Whoa, whoa, I say that because it it was a quick scene, and I recognize you in that scene. It see, wasn't, man, see, man, it wasn't like I don't want to ever work in this studio again. <laughs> you you didn't have to say quick scene. You didn't have to say your lure. All you had to do was say, "I saw you in HBO's The Winning Time." There we go. And the same way you did early, the first level of disrespect you did. When you said, you said, um, what was the disrespect, Heather? He said, shadow. In the shadow of Dave Chappelle. Yeah. How does did, it feel to be successful? How does it feel success, to, be to be successful? Let me put all your hate in one sentence. How does it feel to be in the shadow of a superstar and you doing Lil Rose <laughs> on Asia Lil Rose? Little Roller quick HBO? clips. Quick clips. Okay. I'm excited about that. It looked dope. It, it is dope. It's it a dope looked, show. That's what I'm saying. Shout out to Adam McKay. Shout out to um, Rodney Barnes. Shout out to uh, Jonah Hill. Shout out to everybody that made this show possible. It's a show on HBO, and it's based on a book called Showtime. I forget the author name of it. I should know more of this. But they took this book and made it to, into a series. And the series is about a time when the Lakers really started to build the dynasty. Mm. From when, I don't know who was a team owner before Jerry Buss, but it shows you, takes you back to what Jerry Buss did yes. and what he had to go through to make the Lakers a dynasty. Yes. And when you think about it, it's a comedy. But when you think about the story, for some reason, there's a lot of, it's good times about the Lakers and the Magic Johnson era, but some of it is kind of dark too. Of course. So you ask yourself, how can you make a comedy about the success of the Lakers and everything that was going on in that organization? They did a fantastic job. But that's what comedy is. Yeah, but I didn't, if you tell some people, oh yeah, watch this show on HBO. It's called The, the Winning Time and it's about the Lakers. I don't think anybody's going to expect what they get. And as much as uh, Magic Johnson was a part of the dynasty, as much as... Uh, 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 um, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was. Mm -hmm. um, for me, watching the show, the most interesting character to me is Jerry Buss. For sure. That story. Of he's, the, he's a people person. Like He's so dynamic because he was poor. So He, he was a freak too, son. All the above. Yo, they fucking in this show. Oh, I believe it. I'm only, it's only two of them out, but in that two, I'm like, oh yeah, they about the to turn up. The opening scene, it was like somebody was uh, deep sea diving on somebody. Facts. That was definitely. I think thing. Jerry Buss, uh, his character, uh, what's the guy? Um, white guy. He was a coach in the Lakers back then. Jerry West? Yes. Jerry West. Nobody knew. Like, I like the fact that they're capturing these people's personalities. Facts. How they act, what they were upset about, and everything. <laughs> You're like, what's the logo going to do for me? That I ain't win shit. Like, yeah. Exactly. Another thing people understand was that when he got uh, the Lakers, I think it was some possibility of the. The NBA going out of business. Mm -hmm. They was on the way out. The NBA was like, what are we going to do with this league and everything? 
And he had to think, okay, I got this team. And the way he moved money around with his properties and everything, and he made this damn near $60 million deal, $75 million deal, and only had $122,000 in the bank. And he put it all together. Now I got this team. What do I do about it? How do I make it exciting? Let's let's uh, make it sexy. Yeah. The Lakers dancers. Showtime. Was, Paul Abdul. You know Paul saying? Abdul. One of the first owners that showed the cheerleaders being sexy. Yeah. That, I mean, it should have get you in, well, don't get you in trouble now, but that dynamic of it was cool. And then, you know, understanding how uh, Magic Johnson was very serious about getting money equivalent to Larry Bird. Mm. That was a big thing. And the relationship with that was father. And I played one of his father's friends okay. on the show. Myself, uh, Joe, Epitone, and Earthquake. That's the little crew. I saw. that, But that's a dynamic cast in itself. Yeah. And, and when I saw Bob that. Bob Morgan. I saw it resonated. Guys. Because his father is a dynamic character. He's the closest that man, I've Man, now seen. you trying to take on my show. You ain't hosting the show. I'm it's still not my hosting, show, man. baby. My bad. I was, I was giving show. you flowers, Again, man. Again, this was. You see what he just did now? I'm giving you flowers because you're going to die soon. No, never, <laughs> never. See, that's that's a bad connotation right there. Man, Black men can get flowers. You. I'm not taking a picture death. with you because I'm not going, you're not going to be put me in your RIP photo. It's the only reason I'm going to take pictures. I was just with him. Oh, this will hurt. Oh, man, why did he take the good ones? I'm so sick of those posts. I hope you up in heaven. I know you're looking down on us. Oh God, I know you looking, I know you looking down on us. I be up to your son, rest in paradise, King. I know you looking down on us. Some of them niggas ain't looking down. Fact. Some niggas looking up at motherfuckers. Fact. Everybody, man. Just cause you say enjoy heaven, that don't mean motherfuckers is going. I'm am I am I an evil person by saying that? I mean, I know motherfuckers, I know motherfuckers like. Notorious. Yeah, you gonna have it. Uh, how do you redeem yourself? How do you do? Anybody know the answer to that? How do you do fucked up shit in your life and still make it to heaven? There's got to be some type of religious answer to that. I'm not the one to answer that one. You get saved? I'm not religious. I see a lot of freaky chicks trying to get saved. They act like it go away. Yeah, you like, baptized. come on, Nana. You know? Nana, we know. That's like trying to be like a reborn virgin again. You grow out of it. Ain't no such thing as a reborn virgin. Right, just like you can't be saved after you... Do oh, yeah, oh, that's shit. what I hate them women to be talking like this. Uh-uh, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm a virgin now. Uh-uh, I'm celibate. Did I pronounce the word right? Yeah. Celibate. Celibate. Yep, celibate here, celibate there. Yeah, so a little bit of everything. I don't understand that. <laughs> Yeah. And I think this is a perfect moment to go to one of those moments and one of those clips that I really enjoyed about the Donna Rollins podcast. He just wanted to do a um uh, a little getaway for Team Chappelle. Cut to one of the biggest mansions in St. Martin, St. Bart. Wow. Closest friends, whatever. It was a good time. It was a good time to get away from the stage. It was a good time. It was a holiday se season. Um, Dave um, is connected with the Nation of Islam. I was. I quit. Oh, wow. The, the, the bacon. I had to. I was like, <laughs> if we could have a bacon amnesty day, that would be one thing. But I just couldn't do it. I said, assalamu alaikum. They was like, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> but we, he went in this dope-ass space, and it was the whole fucking crew. And it wasn't like when you, it was a turn up. And when you say turn, sometimes people think turn like it was bitches turn. Ooh, ooh, the dopest thing about it, it was everybody's family. It's me, nice. Stephanie, Austin, Corey Smith, Carla. Um, we just had the, the just the crew. Mm -hmm. And we was okay. We weren't balling. He was balling, <laughs> but I was riding the ball. Cause no Charlemagne. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And riding the ball is like it's not being on somebody's dick, but here's riding the ball. He rented a yacht. Mm. I'm on a yacht, nigga. It's our yacht. <laughs> That's our yacht. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm riding the ball. So 
It's yacht. They don't post nothing. They don't do that shit. It's yacht, nigga. I'm on hashtag yacht life. Right. Work hard, play hard. <laughs> you know, don't forget where you came from. Like, I really paid for that motherfucker, right? And this was a funny ass, this is a funny story, and I've shared it before. So, he went this dope ass yacht. We going from St. Martin to St. Bart's, right? St. Bart's is where Oprah got a house, Jordan got a house. And like, and this time of year, all the billionaires they go there. Right. So I'm like, there's yacht life. I'm doing filters, <laughs> like sunset filters. I, I, did, I think I did a pedicure. <laughs> I, I was caring about my feet the way Ooh. Scarface cares about his feet. Don't disrespect my toes like that. So I'm like, yacht life, boom. We go from St. Martin, we in St. Bart's. Bill Bellamy does this every year. We in St. Martin, we went from St. Martin, we in St. Bart's, yacht life like this. I don't even wanna go, I wanna chill. So we get on a dinghy. The dinghy boat is the boat that takes you from your yacht to like to the, the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. So boom, we get in the dinghy and share. Everybody got their kids and everything. We's like this, and we going to meet Diddy. Oh wow! Oh, Diddy was there. Oh, what you, you mean? Know. Oh wow! No, nigga. it's turning out. Do, you, do anybody ever say that? Oh, Ashy was there. <laughs> oh wow! So so we going to see Diddy. I ain't tripping, but tripping, but I ain't tripping. I met Diddy. Whatever. This is Diddy, 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 Diddy. Yeah. Right. I did whatever. So yeah, they like we gonna meet Diddy. You like? I'm like, I ain't nobody tripping off Diddy. Let's go, nigga. The yacht life. So we walking down the boardwalk, right? And I'm hungry. I'm like, man, anybody hungry? They was like, yeah. I was like, man, I know we're gonna meet Diddy, but let's go get something to eat. And I'm looking for a restaurant, right? I look over to the right. I was like, oh shit, we should go in that restaurant, right? And we walked toward it. What I thought was the restaurant was the entrance to Diddy's super yacht, <laughs> right? Super yacht. Super yacht. I can imagine. So, I, yo, it was crazy. You know how people are like, I don't like to ride boats because you get seasick. Not yeah. on this shit, nigga. You get homesick. <laughs> yo, so this joint was like Hello Pad and everything. And then Dave, we balled out with Dave. And I ain't, you know, that's how women do. They be like this, oh, nigga, I see you with your little yacht, but this is a bigger yacht right here, right? right. I wasn't like that, but Dave was like this, damn you, Diddy! <laughs> so we, and, and uh, my lady was there. Austin's super young. Stephanie, she's there. Austin's super young. And um, I'm like this, I'm a little something like, oh, we're gonna meet Diddy, we're gonna hang out with Diddy, whatever. So Diddy's taking a long time. To arrive? He's, he's he ain't arrived, he did, motherfucker. Okay, to just appear. Okay. You know, because some people need smoke screens and like take that. I thought he was gonna come in like 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 do, like like Diddy bopping. Like I thought he was gonna come in like this, right? So he's taking a while and everything. The women are getting frustrated, right? All the moms, the wives, the baby moms, or whatever you want to call it, they getting a little frustrated. So they're like this, oh, we're gonna go to the ballroom and we do a little shopping, right? Mm -hmm. And I ain't saying my lady's a hater, but this was so funny. So everybody leaving going to the boardwalk. My sister is like, I mean, probably just walking. She was like this, oh, I'm going to go with the girls. Um, she was like this, you want to watch Austin? I want to say, if you don't get that goddamn baby out of my motherfucking face, I'm about to be a Ciroc boy. I'm about to be a bad boy. I'm be doing something, but I ain't going to be the only nigga in there with a kid. Like, let me be a man. Right. You know how niggas say, let me be a man. Please, baby, can I be a man for a second, please? You know? And I was like, if you don't get that baby. So she took him. She took him, right? So... And it's like, and it's one of the things like, man, it's only like four or five of us, right? So Diddy finally come out and uh, we at this table, this dope ass table and everything. And um, they having comment. French Montana was there. Uh, Diddy was there. Dave was there. Corey Smith was there. Fred Yannick was there. And we're at the table. And these motherfuckers having all of these million dollar conversations. Mm -hmm. I was like, <sighs> I was like this, when you niggas gonna get around to the thousand air conversation, man? I ain't joined the none of this shit, right? Everybody's like, and I remember Diddy said, and Diddy was like, Dave was, you know, Dave was so pro pro prolific and yeah. all about the world and everything. And then Diddy was like, fuck that nigga, what about that Netflix money? Because <laughs> this when Dave first caught them joints and yeah. they joked about it. So he talking Netflix money, talking about billions of money. I'm like this, millions, I'm like this. Man, I ain't gonna be able to get in this conversation for two, <laughs> till they come back a couple more zeros, right? And I'm like this, I don't want to just be here. Yeah. I want to contribute to the to the conversation. conversation yeah. So I don't know. This is I don't even know if it ever got released in the States, but he had a brand of vodka called Ciroc Tin. Okay. 
and it was in this beautiful ass fucking bottle. Mm. It was a bottle that didn't look uh, anything familiar to the one, the brand he already had. Okay. It was just some like, oh shit, what is this? Right? So I'm like, everybody talking this million dollar shit, right? And I'm like, this, I need a question. I'm trying to get this conversation, right? So I looked at the, when, it, when the conversation kept skipping around me, it was like, this, okay, six figure. <laughs> it was like a six figure. Excuse me, nigga. And it kept going around me. They kept going six and sixes, right? So finally it was an open. I was like, man, I'm not going to leave this place without saying something. So I was like this. So did he. I said, what makes this brand more superior than all your other Ciroc, um successful brands? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit. And I thought he was like, nigga, what kind of question is that? You know what he said? He said, he just started running out. He said, it's aged 10 years. It's he just started naming everything. I was like this, boom, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out of conversation. <laughs> so he's like this, you want to try some? I'm like, hell yeah, nigga, I want to try some. So I'm like, this vacation. Mm -hmm. It's a rock tent. She's smooth as a motherfucker, mm. right? And French Montana, who's I'm a, who I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of French Montana to the extent that his nigga I ain't worried about nothing. Yeah. Hey, that was my That's your that, jams. that was my you know that That's was my intro jams. song for about a year. Yeah. So I'm like this French dear, puppy dear, and I'm like oh shit. You know French like he just he just he's a good time guy. <laughs> what does that mean? A good time guy. I'm sweating. Woo. Oh, okay. I mean, not, I'm not saying that. He likes you know, to party. He's like to party. He's like, this is vacation, right? Yeah. And then it's like, I like to have fun at times. Mm -hmm. So one thing led to another. <laughs> oh, God. And all I know, I was like this. Hey, <laughs> ain't worried about nothing. Nigga, I ain't worried about nothing. I mean, uh, nigga, I ain't worried about nothing. Hey, hey about it's it. fucking a party. It's like the dopest thing about this whole fucking weekend is that it's not like anybody at the door who lists you on. If anybody is there, mm -hmm. they are influential in this family. Like if it's one, like this is like I can tell the people that it was star studded, star studded, star studded with friends. Right. It was like this is a good time, having a good time. And and um, I was like, hey, <laughs> I got lit, right? Here comes Stephanie again. <laughs> they came back from the trip. Now it's just all men, four or five of us. We have a good conversation. Now she coming up. Now she got Austin on her shoulder, yeah. on her hip, like he's the heaviest thing <laughs> in the world. Ever, right? <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm not front. It's, I'm on holiday. Your holiday means you can take, I'm not on vacation, nigga. I'm on holiday. holiday. Holiday is different. I'm on holiday. I'm like this. I and ain't nobody mad. Nobody mad. I'm on holiday like this. Right? I'm on holiday. And then she comes back up, right? I'm like, what are you doing? Now she got Austin on the hip. And she looks, she tell me, you need to drink some water. I'm like this. I thought I was drinking water for the last hour and a half. <laughs> that Ciroc tin was so fire. Ooh. And I was the life of the party after that. Wow. We eating, we eating lamb chops and shit. Russell Simmons is over there talking about, motherfucker, you all right? <laughs> and like, it was just, it was just a dope ass night. And I was still a little like inebriated right mm -hmm. so i didn't know i didn't want the party to end everybody's like leaving right i got flip-flops on low ain't no lotion on my shit and r.i.p per kim usual. porter per usual r.i.p kim porter was there right and i'm telling her and i i was like a little bit like this right mm -hmm. and she was like you need to um you're gonna we're gonna, we gonna you're gonna get on your boat <laughs> right we're gonna get your boat i thought she meant like they had like uber boats out there yeah like I'm telling Dave, yo, Dave, you want to stay? I'm staying, man. <laughs> I'm like, we turn it up. And he was like, man, if you don't get your ass in the boat, I was like, no. Puffy got a boat for me. <laughs> and Kim, Corey Smith could tell you the story. So Kim, I would call him. So Kim was like, I thought she was alluding to, like, they're going to give me a boat. I could just hang out as long as I want to give me a boat back. Cut to, um, they poured me into the boat. Oh, <laughs> Damn, I daddy. went to I went there with two flip-flops. I left with one. 
But I had, ah, oh, man. I was like, this, this is what holiday is all about, right? So was it you had your own personalized boat? Like a little mini? Like- no, no, no. I was, I thought that they was going to give me a boat to get back. They was oh, they- trying to, she was saying, nigga, you better get this dinghy back to your shit. <laughs> and I know I had a good time. But I was like this, man, if there's any time to like really cut up like that and it feels safe, it's around your family and your friends. Mm-hmm. You know, and the next day, I was so nervous about it because I got yelled at all night. I was like, who the fuck yells during a fucking vacation? <laughs> On a fucking island with a private, sh- it just didn't make sense where the beef was coming from. So next day I'm by the pool, mm-hmm. granted, and uh, Dave was there, right? And I didn't know, you know how you know you did something, but you gotta hear what people are saying, yeah, right? So you don't know. After a wild night. So I was like, um, I said, uh, I said, yeah, Dave. Word on the street is. <laughs> Somebody might have had one too many. He was like, yeah, nigga, you was fucked up. But you was funny as shit and you had a good time. Ah, uh, that's all that and that, and that And that's all that mattered. That was, that was one um, experience with him that meant a lot to me. Because it wasn't like people look at our lives and like, oh, y'all turn up. It's bitches everywhere. It's always going to be bitches around, whatever. But for me, that experience with... Him with his entire family, me with my entire family. And yeah. the, uh, the whole family structure thing for me was new. And everybody was close and we was all there, family having a good time. That was a a, a very memorable uh, moment that I had with Dave. Okay. That I'll never forget. Yay. So you don't want to be on my show no more? Of course I want to be on your show. I'm just- All right, man. I'm Go working you can for leave the man. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? All right, thank you. Word? You thank go- you for being- you just said I'm on a clock. I was I was making a statement. Ain't nobody tripping about your clock and your little your little job. <laughs> your little job. All right. You can leave, son. Bet. I didn't know if he was gonna exit me out or nothing. Yo, I appreciate the conversation though. Come on, brother. 75, man. <laughs> you be cool like how you be cool, all right? I can't believe, I can't believe. That my seventy fifth episode of this podcast, a motherfucker just bum rushed my shit. No security. I don't got no security. <sighs> this is like twice in one weekend we've discussed this. About me having not some security? Yeah. Cause I did. I. I. I you it's said not you, yesterday. You said I should do security, and I don't want to. Cause I think like once you start hanging around security, people want to come at you before that. I do. You are absolutely right. I don't really understand my celebrity. I don't connect with it. I don't know. I mean, I got got this weekend. Yeah, what happened yesterday was pretty thorough. So this is how they got me. You know, at the shows, when you go to shows, they had those guys want you to sign, like, whatever film or joint, you know, what do they call it? Uh, uh, they want your autograph. They're- I know, but they have a name. They just, they want autographs, they memorabilia, they collect memorabilia and they sell it, eBay, whatever. So I'm in my hotel room in Philly and I get a phone call in the hotel room, which was alarming because nobody ever calls a hotel room unless you're fucking really loud or there's smoke coming from there. Only time. Hotel phones ever ring. So, phone rings. Hey, Donnell. It's Pete from the club. I'm like, what's up? I'm gonna come and get what? I'm gonna come pick you up. And I've been walking to the club. I was like, I've been walking to the club. Yeah, but we're expecting a lot of rain. I was like, oh, good looking. That makes sense. What time you want to meet me? I said. I'll come down at 7.20, right? 7.20, I go down outside and I don't see anybody. I'm like, why the fuck would the club say they're gonna come pick me up and don't come pick me up? It ain't even raining out this bitch, fuck it. If it's a short distance, I don't have a problem with walking. If it's like less, less than a block. So I go outside, no car left, right, no car. 
And then they called me, hey, Donnie, what's your ETA to the car? I said, I thought Pete was supposed to pick me up. They said, who's Pete? And what happened when I walk, was walking to, the, walking to the club, the guys, the one, a guy that had these posters of Disney's uh, soul, Hey, Donnell, can you sign these for me? And he had a little kid with him. He was like, you mind taking a picture with my son? He's a big fan. Sign this one, sign this one. I get to the club. I was like, whatever happened to Pete? They was like, who the fuck is Pete? I'm like, God damn, that motherfucker got me. And it made me nervous because I was like, that could have been a hit. Could have been serious. Yeah, who, 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 but who wants to hurt an ashy motherfucker? What world are we living in where you want to hurt somebody that's trying... Who wants to beat up the comedian? Who wants to hurt the comedian? You're a foul person. If you want to hurt a comedian, you're a foul person. Kanye, just stop it. Leave Pete alone. Deal with the issues you have with your wife behind closed doors or in a private situation. But leave Pete alone because comedians can fucking hurt you. What you think is a a uh, moment when you get at a motherfucker, you don't want to, you don't want it from a comedian. They create moments all the time. Live for funny shit. Same way I live to play this clip. This is the Don Air Raleigh Show, 75th episode. We're trying to get, not trying, we will get to 100,000 subscribers. We'll get to a point where I will have guests to book on this show and I don't have to rely on somebody that's looking for the shit key. Until then, shit key guests are invited to this podcast. But check this out. Thanks for coming on The Breakfast Club. That's when you were in love with August Alcina, remember? I wasn't in love with no motherfucking August. I liked his shit. <laughs> Who said the they was thing. in love with him? I can't, what? Well, well, I, I showed emotions Towards but, some, nah, nah, you didn't just like it, you loved it. Yo, I did not. I loved it. And yeah. I love this shit. And I'm gonna keep on See? you. You right. You know what? I gotta tell you, I, I, I ain't love him. I fuck with him. He seemed like he was a second Donnell coming. Donnell, one time, listen, August had a listening party. Shut up. Donnell flew into town <laughs> to come to the party. Hey, ye, I swear. Ye, ye, I swear. I never wanted to tell anybody this story, but I'm gonna keep it real. I was a huge August Halsina. I told you, I, I did fly into town. I did. I was like, oh shit, yo, shut up, man. I said, oh shit, son. I was like, I get to meet him, right? I was like, it wasn't him, it was his music. He was just gritty. He reminded me of like Jennings, whatever. I liked the boy, I ain't had no crush on him like that. So I I, I flew into town, right? I flew, I flew myself in what type of hoe I am. <laughs> Fanboy. What type of what type of basic nigga I am? I'm so basic. <laughs> he threw middle seat coat. I said middle seat coat in the back with the with the, 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 the headpiece don't even go back. That's how much a hoe I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm so basic. Right? I flew in and then when I did fly in, I even went to the club. I was like, <clears throat> and then he was all on the mic talking, singing and shit. And I was like, yo, he looked at me like, who that nigga? I'm like, really, nigga? I'm your number one fan. And I never told him about this story. He did his shit. He was like, oh, shit. And you, you know, I was excited. I was like, I wasn't like, ah. Oh. You were. No, I wasn't. I was like, I see you, nigga. All right, whatever. <laughs> whatever. The, the first time I got introduced to the music, I was in Miami at a pizza shop, 3 o'clock in the morning, fucked up. And I loved this shit came. I'm like, who is this nigga? And my youngins told me, you don't know that's all because I seen it. I didn't know who he was. So I listened to his shit. His shit is powerful as shit. So. I'm at this party that Angela Yee invited me to. She said, I'm going to pay you if you show up, right? And he did his shit. Then he went over to like a um, VIP section and shit, right? I still ain't really get the love I needed, right? <laughs> so they had a little sofa area. I forget the name of this club. They had a little sofa area. So he trying to stand up so people could see him. And I'm over there trying to say, what up? And when he stood up on the couch, the nigga... I swear I never told anybody this story. The nigga <laughs> slipped and fell, and I caught the nigga. <laughs> 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 hey yo, hey yo, <laughs> hey yo, hey 
yeah, I don't believe hey, you. Yeah, yeah, I swear to God, I felt like a bitch ass nigga, yeah. I caught that nigga, that nigga said, I said, got you. Yo, I caught this nigga, son. I threw him back up because I was like, hold up, no homo, nigga. I swear to God. You know you ain't pushing? Yo, I was like this. I was like, this shit too much. I said, I just caught this nigga. <laughs> How come no one else seen that? Yo, my, my man Forty, he know not to tell nobody that story. Forty would say word to Bubba. He caught that nigga that day. So. Yo, I told Forty, whatever you do, don't ever tell no nigga. Don't ever tell about I caught August Alcina. I ain't want him to hurt himself, son. I caught that nigga, son. I caught that nigga, son. I, yo, I did like this. That nigga started stumbling. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I felt gay. I had him too long, right? I said, yo, nigga, get your bitch ass back up, then. nigga. I ain't catching you no more, nigga. I swear, I swear, I was fucking with August like that. And that, you know what? I was a big fan. I remember I know. He, he was supposed to be doing a show in London, England, right, nigga? I found out. I know you didn't fly I to went, London. Yo, no, I tried to surprise him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this, son. This is how much of a basic nigga I was, right? I said, oh, I ain't even gonna let him know I'm coming. Right? <laughs> I like I like this all the way. I was like this all the way in London. He gonna be surprised to see me, right? <laughs> I'm not making this. This is my life. This is my Jenna, life. How are you gonna even see him in London? Nigga, I was in London. He was in London. How many niggas be in London? But how, but how you? Did you have his number? I ain't have his number. <laughs> right? I tried to call you. I called somebody. Didn't I call you? Uh, you might have. That's I, an, yeah, I might have. Yeah, I called you and I said, I ain't tripping off this nigga, but I'm in London. <laughs> I know she gonna talk shit to me, right? So how you gonna ask? You can't just ask for another nigga number. Like, yo, you got this math, right? You gotta ask like Wu Tang, yo, God. And August would have definitely said no. No, he wouldn't. He fucked with me, son. Don't do that, ye. Don't do that. Don't uh, do he that. Was like, yo, is he on some weird shit? No, he not. Like, no, like, is that nigga on some weird shit? See how he dressed, nigga? <laughs> you worried about me? I'm worried about you. Don't Selena me. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. I know he didn't See, say that. No, but yeah, I'm telling you, this is a true story, yeah. So I'm in London, right? I was doing a show with, Dave. I don't know who I was, maybe working with Dave. And I was like, oh, I was like this. Oh, shit, I was like this. And after I'll be looking at this schedule. I was like, oh, this, I, I said this, this is what I said. <laughs> I said, we're going to be in London at the same time? Like a coincidence. I was like this. I ain't even going to say nothing. I'm a, I kept saying, I'm going to surprise him. <laughs> Yo, I yo, I'm in I'm in motherfucking London, right? And I'm in there like it feel like one of them fake ass shows. You know how promoters say they got them, they buy the tickets, <laughs> then they yo. I'm like, oh, this nigga, oh, he go, I'm a bitch, nigga. I went to a spot he ain't gonna even be here. I'm walking you flew around all the way to London. I flew no, I, I ain't fly all the way to London. I was in London. Uh huh. I'm passport. I'm a passport nigga, right? And I kept on. The funny thing is, I kept going to the DJ, right? I kept saying, you think he gonna come? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga I never show up, man. No. But I, I love that dude. I love that youngin', man. And I tell you, this is the reason why. Like, I was introducing him. I didn't know who he was. I know he was he was coming up. But you know, one of my favorite artists is Life Jennings, right? And then this what the what the connection was. And he reminded me so much of Life Jennings. Have a gritty story that's like honest. And then come to find out, I saw another video where August, when he first started, one of the things that got him popping was he did a cover of Life Jennings' song. I love this shit, no, um, Must Be Nice. He did it, and I was like, and then I, and then I understood what the connection was. You know, had I not that connection, I would've never caught the nigga. Mm -hmm. You would have caught him still. I wouldn't have caught him. I wouldn't have caught him. You but, wouldn't let nobody fall. Yo, I wouldn't. Yo, but it was just so ironic. I'm like, damn, this gonna fit. Like, I was just like, ye gonna tear my ass up with this shit. <laughs> so another uh, very exciting episode of the Donnie Rollins show. This was a very, very, very exciting milestone show. It's hard to do 75 anything. It's hard to do 75 push-ups. It's hard to do 75 strokes. And it's definitely hard to do 75 episodes. But I think I'm on to something. Shout out to my girl Nikki. She couldn't be here. Shout out to everybody that's made this uh, the Donnie Rollins show one of the best podcasts you didn't think you wanted to see. Until next time, remember, a joke can be too soon, but it never can be too soon for a funny observation.
Take it out, please. Hot, hot, hot.